Howdy folks, John here. Working on a Roban Superscale AS350 RC helicopter today. This is just the nose section. For anyone who's not familiar with these things, I did a review on this a uh, number of years back. I'll fire a link below in the description to that review page on my website. Roban makes decent big scale helis. They're far from ideal, but for the price, they're not too bad at all. As you can see, the front seat is removed and that's the project I'm working on today. If you uh, look at the review, uh, you'll know the one thing that I had mentioned right from the get-go is this thing was just screaming for a scale pilot inside. And I started looking for scale pilots for it. I was quite shocked at the prices. Full body scale pilots I was finding out were coming in anywhere between $100 and $200. And I was just not going to spend that on a little doll to go inside a radio controlled helicopter. Thankfully, one of my web visitors who had uh, seen the review and had the same helicopter got in touch with me and said he was using a G.I. Jane doll in his Roban. And you can pick G.I. Janes up on uh, eBay for anywhere between 30 and 40 bucks, so a lot less money. And she's been in there for a good number of years, no real problems. It's just her scale is off a little bit. She's just a little bit too big. Uh, you'll see in the review, if you read it, I actually had to shorten her legs because they were too long for the anti-torque pedals. And you can see her torso is just a little bit too high as well for the seat. Her head is actually almost hitting the uh, ceiling inside the cockpit. So I got a 3D printer last year, and since I got it, I've always wanted to scale down her body a bit. I'll still utilize her head, and we'll probably still use her hands because they grip the cyclic and collective stick quite well. And then the other problem with her body, you know, because she is a doll, she's made of that dense rubberized plastic, you know, solid throughout. You know, we'll weigh her to find out what her weight is, but she is very heavy and on an already heavy scale heli. If I could shave some weight off of that with a PLA printed articulated mannequin, yeah, should go a long way to uh, shed some poundage off this thing. And the other thing I've been toying with is uh, seeing that I'm going to be printing a new body, I could put a little cavity inside for a little micro servo hooked up to her head, so her head would be articulated back and forth. Let's get a weight of G.I. Jane, so we can see how much weight we're going to save by printing out a new body. 181 grams. So this is what I came up with on Tinkercad. It's a nice, uh, easy program for a goofball like me to use. If you can drag and drop shapes, you can use Tinkercad to create your own 3D print models. Anyway, here's the uh, body I came up with. have the little uh, insert here for the servo. And here are the upper arms, lower arms, legs or thighs, and then the lower legs. And we'll just uh, slice this in Cura now. Probably going to go with 0.8 millimeter or 1 millimeter wall thickness. This doesn't have to be that strong. And I'm going to use a really low infill density, probably 10%, maybe even a little bit lower. We'll see how it comes out. I printed up quite well, no real drama. I find these Tinkercad ball and sockets, they work pretty well. Just have to sand the ball down a little bit to get the print ridges off of it to smooth it out. And maybe the first time you snap the socket on, just hold the socket with your hand so it can't split. And then if you press on the socket and turn it on the ball, kind of just like sizing a ball link on a helicopter linkage, yeah, it works out pretty well. I like the dimensions, they seem pretty decent. A little curvature on the back seems to match the curvature on the chair pretty good. Sits in there quite nicely. We'll have to cut off G.I. Jane's hands just above the articulation point here. So sh we've got an actual hand that can grip the collective and the cyclic stick. But uh, that shouldn't be a problem. And then just glue it onto the bottom of the arm pieces. Didn't bother with feet, what's the point? Just added more weight and the boots, boots are on anyway. So uh, no big deal there. And then the only other thing on here is the servo indentation. I just cut the mounting tab ears off of this little nine gram servo and we'll just put some double-sided tape on it, but it fits nicely in there. Got the little cutout for the wire. 
Okay, I think we got her beat here. Just uh, cut the GI Jane arms and then just glued it on with uh, CA glue. The arms might be just a little bit too long, but I needed at least this one long enough to reach the collective stick down by the side of the chair. But I think that should be okay. And the head, I just took the uh, servo horn, ground down all the arms around it. So I just have the splined hub in the center and uh, CA glued it into the neck there. And then I did decide just to do the hole in the head uh, to get the screwdriver in to screw the uh, servo horn screw down onto the servo output shaft. And let's see what it looks like with the helmet on. So other than having our little scale pilot at the right scale now, let's see if the weight savings is actually worth this time. So the scale pilot alone is 58 grams. We have to beat what, 180, 181. So well, that is good, but the helmet, let's see what we've got here. Whew, that helmet is heavy. We're up to 70, flight suit, 85, and then the two boots. Oh, those boots are heavy as well. It's up to 97 grams, definitely a lot lighter. Not quite half the weight, but pretty close. Before mounting the pilot back into the heli, just thought we'd go over a couple of things. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but I've got the wire coming down uh, in the uh, flight suit, and then I've just cut a little hole in the bottom. Don't know if you can see it there, but it's just coming out of the back of the butt. And then I've drilled a hole through the seat back and just put a little rubber grommet in there and then have the wire coming through the grommet just to protect it from the edges of the seat. I soldered on a thinner uh, servo wire and it's obviously longer because that other wire we had a plug it wouldn't have reached so uh, this is going to be a little bit easier. Going to have to cut a hole in the floor underneath the seat to pass it through. No big deal there. There's the screw that's holding the pilot in and also have this uh, harness on but it's more for show, but it does hold the pilot a little bit. If you're wondering what the harness is built from, I just made it from uh, fabric hockey tape, folded it three times over to give it some thickness, and get it to the right width as well. I just used a little washer for the buckle, but it is screwed into both sides of the seat with little hex screws. So I can unscrew it to get the pilot out if I ever needed to service the servo. Speaking of that servo, most of those little cheapy 9 gram servos, they're only rated at 4.5 volts. Uh, this helicopter runs on 2S Lifey, so up to 6.5 volts. So I'm going to have to drop the voltage down before it gets to the servo. Probably just uh, solder a couple of 4004 diodes in series, put it in series with the uh, positive, and uh, each diode will drop the voltage. Uh, what, about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 to regulate it down to a fairly safe voltage for that little servo in there. Oh, and let's find out what this weighs. So seat, everything, all together, 144 grams, so less than uh, just the GI Jane pilot. So I think this little project is certainly going to be worthwhile if you wanted to try something similar. Seat and pilot are mounted back into the cockpit here. Got the doors put back on. Doesn't look too bad. She's pretty much the right height. Could have probably gone a little bit shorter on the torso, but not bad. Uh, her hand still reaches the collective stick down there. And the other hand on the cyclic, no problems there. Sorry about the glare from the lights. And if you're curious how I did the wiring, uh, again, just have the servo wire drilled a hole in the bottom of the floor right under the chair and uh, just have the plug to plug into the extension in the heli. Here are my two diodes to uh, drop the voltage to a safe level for that uh, servo. Here's the other half of the big old beast and just show you my wiring down here real quick. Here's my RX pack and I just had to add this little pilot servo plug that the uh, pilot servo will plug into now. 
those are my existing ones and I've just got this pilot plug going to a spare channel on my receiver uh, channel number eight and to hook this up we just plug these in and then the canopy slides on and let's see if it works <laughs> ah, that looks pretty cool, I must admit. I've just mixed channel 8 to the input stick side. And because it's on the input side, it happens before any dual rate reduction. So even when I'm in low rates, this will move the full extent. It doesn't change if I'm in high rates or low rates. Head movement is the same. And I've also mixed in a little bit of head travel with aileron or cyclic roll using the multiplex add function to channel 8 as well. Only 50% though of what rudder would produce. I don't know if I like that, but I thought I'd try it. Figure your head kind of turns if you're giving a cyclic command. You kind of look out the side a little bit. Now the question you may have, as I already do, is will you even be able to see the pilot's head move while you're flying close in? There's only one way to find out. Let's get this thing airborne. Time to see what we can see here. Bring it in a little closer, not too close. Oh, yeah, I can see the head. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. You have to be in though close to see it. Six. Just knowing that she's a lot lighter and she can actually see her head now, that means a lot too. So definitely a worthwhile project. But what do you think? Was it worth uh, the extra roughly 10 grams of weight to have the moving head? Or should I just have left that out? comments below. Regardless, it was a fun project and that's what this hobby is all about. Having fun and learning new things. Thanks for watching folks. We'll see you next time. Happy flights.